Hello, in this video I would like to talk a little bit about the main parts of a booster station. To give you a real life example, today I choose a Malta E, sizes below 2.2 kilowatts. We can see that this Malta E is equipped with three CR3-10 pumps of the new generation. They are equipped with permanent magnet motors. Due to that fact, this booster station offers a lot more functionality than the old versions with a standard asynchronous motors, but we'll talk about these additional features in a moment. Just let's have a look at what makes our up a boosting station. If we take a look, we have the input from the main side, which is coming from the municipality. Then we have this piece of pipe, which connects to all three pumps. This is what we call the manifold. It distributes the water equally to all three pumps. In this setup, two of the pumps are responsible for the pressure control of the system. They are working interchanging, so one of them is starting first. After a given run time, at the next stop, the other one will take the lead and the other one will follow again. The third pump is a standby pump, just to give some security if one of the pumps should really fail. Then what we can also see mounted to the manifold is this. This is the dry running protection. It is a simple pressure switch, which will switch off all the pumps if the pressure from the main side is insufficient. This gives us the idea that there's no water in the pipes and this leads to the assumption that the pumps might run dry and to protect them from breaking, we will just switch off the whole boosting system. Let's now take a look at the back side, of the output side of the pump of the pumping station and see what parts we have on that side. Okay, now we'll have a look on the outlet side of the boosting station. What we see here is a non-return valve on each of the pumps. This prevents the water from going back when we switch off the pumps. How does a non-return valve work? Well, it opens if the water is flowing from the pump to the manifold that we see here in the back. It opens in that direction, but as soon as the water is flowing in the other direction, it will close and prevent the water from going back through the pump into the mains. This also helps us to keep the pressure in the pressurized system up and at the set point that we want to have. Then the water is taken into this piece of pipe, which is another manifold, and this is connected with flanges to the building side, and the water is then transported to the taps and the showers and the consumers in the building. The green thing that we see here is the vessel. This is used to keep pressure in the system and to provide pressurized water even if the pumps are off and if we only need a small amount of water. If we wouldn't have this vessel with each opening of a tap or shower head or with each opening of a consumer, the pressure would immediately drop in the system and the pumps would have to switch on again and go up in speed. This could lead to a very fast on and off switching of the pumps, which is not very healthy for the pumps. So we have a given amount of water, a water volume in this vessel, it is pressurized and if the pumps are off and there's a need for water, we will first empty this vessel and if this is empty and the pressure is dropping down in the system, then the pumps will start and go up in speed. What we also see here is two pressure sensors. These are used to transmit the actual pressure that we have to the pumps and the pumps will compare the measured pressure with the set point that we have and depending on the difference the pumps will go up in speed if the measured pressure is below the set point or will go down in speed if the measured pressure is below the set point. What we also see in this installation is a pressure gauge where we can read out the actual pressure. 
The last part that we have in the boosting station, but a vital part, is our switch cabinet. In this case, with the Multi-E, it's a very simple cabinet. We don't have much in it. Let's have a look inside. We can open the door. And what we have is simply a main switch that we can see here. And we have circuit breakers, in this case three circuit breakers, one for each pump. Pump one, two and three. These will protect the pumps from shortcuts or short circuits. And this is to switch the whole system on and off. There's not much intelligence in this cabinet because all the intelligence that we need is placed in the pumps. As we learned before, the pressure sensors are directly connected to the pumps and all the control is done inside the pump. The only thing that we do here is provide each of the pumps with the needed power. So let's now see how the system is working in praxis. So we just start up the whole system, we provide power and the only thing that we have to do is turn this main switch on. And now we'll have a look at what is happening if the pressure in the system is changing and we want to control the pressure and keep it at a constant pressure. Okay, now let's have a look on how the boosting station is working. We have connected the Grundfos Go software to the pumps. We're using a Bluetooth dongle for this. It is connected to the pumps. We can just put it aside. And then we use the Grundfos Go software installed on the iPhone to start the whole system. At the moment it is in stop. We can see the green lights are not moving. They're all off and no further display on the displays. Now we switch the system on by using the Grundfos Go. We just select the operating mode and switch to normal operation and immediately the pumps start working. We can now see the green lights of the pumps, of this one pump is turning and we see that the pump is running at a given speed. If we now take a look at this pressure gauge and also take a look at the software at the Grundfos Go, we can see that the set point is set to 28.3 meters of head and the actual value can be seen up here is also 28.3 meters of head. The speed which the one pump is running at is 2340 rpm. Now let's increase the, the water flow by opening a valve and simulating that more people are in need of water. As we can see on the pressure gauge, the pressure was dropping. The actual value is now 28.1. It is increasing as the pump is speeding up. The pump will reduce the speed again and try to control the pressure to the set point of 28.3 meters. Let's further increase the demand for water. Now the pressure gauge shows that the pressure is dropping again. The pumps are speeding up and trying to supply the needed amount of water and to keep the pressure up. What we can also see if we look at the pumps now is due to the increased demand for water, both pumps are now running. We can see on both these pumps that the green eye is turning and we even have a need for the third pump to supply the flow. Even the third pump is running and is supplying the water to the system. Let's now simulate a decrease in need of water by closing this valve again. What happens is that the pressure in the system will increase, the pumps will go down in speed and one after another 
they will not only go down in speed, but one pump after another will be switched off in the system. And we can do this until the system is fully closed, which means there is no demand in the system, no consumers opened, the pumps will go down in speed, and after a given time they will switch off. Now we can see two of the pumps have already stopped and only one pump is still operating. And it should stop. And now even the last pump has stopped, the whole system is in standby and as soon as we have a need for water, the pumps will not switch on immediately. First we will see that the vessel will be emptied and only after this the pumps will turn on again. Let's simulate this again by slowly opening the valve again. Still no flow. Now it starts flowing and only after a delay the first pump switches on. Now only one pump is running at low speed, the other two are still in standby and this is how a booster system works.